the worst makeup of 2024. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, we had to get dramatic with it. But I mean, these are the worst products that I've tried this year so far because I haven't done a video just talking about the stuff that I uh, I didn't like. Now, I've got to say, kudos to all the makeup brands in 2024 because they've been kicking butt. There is so much more good than there is bad. Like, there's very, very few bad products. Even some of these are a little bit of a stretch and I'll share with you what ones those are, of course. Now, don't get me wrong, there's been plenty of products that I've tried this year so far that aren't my cup of tea, but I kind of can feel like they could work for some people. So I didn't include many of those. These are just products that for me, I couldn't get to work out no matter what I tried. They are absolutely below average products that I would not repurchase and that do not hold up or look good on me. Of course, these are just my personal opinions, but that's the point of having so many review channels right you know so if you really like these products feel free to share down below your experiences your skin type everybody has different preferences of course and let's get into it now there's not many products so i feel like i might have missed some products this is the most unorganized i've been in terms of products that i've been testing and keeping track just because of my move so if i miss anything that you know i didn't like this year let me know down below and make me feel guilty about it but this is what I could concoct when pulling through my products. So the first thing is actually one that I haven't talked about with you guys, but I have been prepping for a full skin tint review video, and I wanted to pick up some of the popular ones. So one of the popular ones that I pulled out was the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Skin Tint, which I think it had a little moment in the sunshine for a bit there. It's quite popular. A lot of people have tried it. Well, I've tried it. and. I hate this. This is one of the worst skin tints I've ever tried and I'm being like it sounds dramatic but I really mean it. There's so many better options out there in terms of skin tint. So this sits on top of my skin. I cannot get even coverage with this. It always looks patchy no matter what and if you have dry skin run far far away because this instantly has the pigment travel to the dry patches and emphasize them. It's just so interesting because a style product like this is supposed to be extremely hydrating, but all it did really was emphasize the dryness that, to be honest, wasn't visible and I felt like it wasn't there. So this brought out many insecurities of dryness of my skin that I didn't even know was there. So between it not getting an even coverage and always looking patchy, the pigment traveling over to the dry patches and it just all over not looking good, this is the worst product that I've tried for complexion because this is actually the only complexion product that I have. Even though there might have been complexion products that I didn't favor, I didn't necessarily think any were bad. So this is the only complexion product that I've used that I'm aware of this year that I could remember that was legitimately bad for me. So, so yeah, this is a surprise one. But I think this is like my fourth or fifth time using it because I wanted to be sure before I trashed it and... I'm sure I don't like this. Okay, so we're gonna go straight on over to the eyes. I have a couple eyeshadow palettes. These Huda Beauty Creamy Obsessions palettes. Now these were a unique launch because the majority of the shadows in here are cream eyeshadows. Now I will say I think that this neutral brown creamy obsession has a better chance than the grayish creamy obsessions but generally speaking the overall theme about this palette are the cream shadows and while at first it's quite shocking how easy the cream shadows are to use with a brush they blend out just like a powder I'm compromising with these for sure I don't get the pigment that I see in the pan with these and they fade so quickly and they crease. I can get no more than four hours of wear if I use the creams as the base colors in this look, which that's the point, to use the cream colors. Like there's a few good shades in here. You can always use a set shade, but my eyes still crease. The shimmery lid shades here are good. And that's about that. Like unless I'm just using the cream in the crease and nothing else for a little bit of shadow and depth, this palette, is not going to last on me. So mostly for longevity purposes, 
I am not a fan of these palettes because application on these is really easy. It's an approachable way to use cream eyeshadows, but I can't get these to last on me and I'm not someone who struggles with longevity on the eyes. I don't have oily eyelids and these still just don't hold up on me. So was not a fan of these. Now, the longer this next item has been in my collection, the less I liked it. So Prada Beauty came to Sephora semi-recently and I ended up doing like a little bit of a dive into each style of products that they launch. And the longer that I've had each product from the brand, the less that I've liked the brand. Like the foundation I thought was good and then I compared it side by side to other foundations of a similar price point and I was like, you know what? For this price point, it's not that good. Same thing with this eyeshadow palette. I said, you know, it gives a really great, even luxury, effortless application that you tend to get with luxury eyeshadows in my original review and that's still kind of the case, I suppose. But the longer I've had this, the less I've wanted to use this. Like, this palette's kind of ugly. Nothing about this gives me luxury experience. And again, it's one of those things where if I put this side by side with a similar eyeshadow of this price point, that eyeshadow is going to trump this one. The application of this was very easy, but if I put this against Tom Ford, Dior, or Charlotte Tilbury, I am going to recommend you pick up all three of those over a Prada Beauty eyeshadow. It's giving outdated. So is this a bad quality palette? No, but it is such a scam, okay? So the eyeshadow itself is very, very pretty component-wise. And then you open it up and I just feel like it goes downhill. This is, it's giving Claire's it's giving cheap, it's giving early 2000s packaging. This shakes because it is uh, a removable component, but still, for the price that you pay for this, should it really shake? You get these awful straw-like applicators. I don't know, the more that I've had this, the more upset I've been getting and offended by this palette because I just think and laugh about my original review because I was trying to justify it. There, no, just get Tom Ford if you're gonna pay this price point. But the packaging is beautiful and when Prada Beauty continues to expand their range, will I continue to buy their products? Yes, moving on. Now, that's literally it for complexion and eyes. Like I said, I haven't been too let down. Maybe a couple eyeliners that weren't fabulous, but haven't been too let down, I'd say. But lips, this is the year of lips. There are so many lip products that have launched, and I'm actually quite picky. Like the stuff that they've launched, I have not been enjoying. Well, these ones in particular. Of course, there's been a lot of other great ones, but normally I'm not offended by lip products, but these give me every reason to be. So this is for my European audience because I bought this in Europe when I was in Spain. It's a drugstore brand. It's an old kind of outdated drugstore brand from my understanding, but I wanted to buy some makeup in Europe that was drugstore. I stumbled across the Bourjois Rouge Velvet Ink. This is heinous. <laughs> like a horrible, horrible lip product. One of the worst lip products I've ever used. Hopefully the camera is doing it justice and you can see how uneven it applies. The product is literally scared of itself because it separates from itself. It doesn't give even coverage over the lips. It runs away from other pigment particles just to leave my lips coming through the product underneath. It also has this consistency that dries up the lips. Needless to say, I don't recommend this product. It's really, really bad. This next item was truly such a letdown because the launch was so hyped up. But I do not like the way that the Skin by Kim matte lips look on my lips. It's really disappointing because I was very excited for this launch. There also was lip liners that launched that honestly, I really do like the lip liners. But these lipsticks make my lips look very dry and aged. And it is possible for a matte lipstick to not do that. 
but this is one of the most unflattering matte lipsticks, but it's interesting because it doesn't necessarily feel dry on the lips. It's not the worst feeling matte lipstick. You know, it's a little powdery feeling, but it feels very thin. It's not a bad feeling on the lips, but the way that it sits on the lips emphasizes every single fine line in the lips, unless you have perfectly filled lips that fill out those creases. This is going to make your lips look very, very, very aged in a way for me that no other product has done. It's just odd because it doesn't feel too drying. It feels really nice as a matte lipstick formula, if I'm being honest, but it doesn't look nice. I have to overly hydrate, kind of pat it in the center of my lips, use my finger to rub it out, and then put a gloss over top to make these look better. So the way that these sit on my lips is very, very unflattering and there really is no way around it besides putting a gloss on top which defeats the purpose of having a matte lip. So I do have on the number one shade today. It's a beautiful nude with just like a taupey lip liner also from Skin that I have on right now. Love the color but the way that it sits on the lips is so unflattering. I just I don't see, like, I guess Kim has perfectly filled lips. But it's interesting because even in her promo photos, like, you do see the fine lines of her lips, but it looks good. It doesn't look good on, like, my surgically untouched small <laughs> little lips. The next one is more so of a personal problem. Like, I was personally offended because what I don't like about this is what a lot of people like about this. But I wouldn't be true to myself if I didn't mention the Charlotte Tilbury Lipstick and Icon Baby because the kissing formula from Charlotte Tilbury is my all-time number one favorite lipstick formula in the world. Like, I would put my life on the line for this formulation. I'm kidding, but it's it's that good. And so this was my favorite color from her most recent Hollywood Icon launch. It's just this gorgeous pink, but they completely ruined the kissing formula because there is gritty glitter in here. And it's funny because this lipstick in particular went viral because of the glitters in there, but they ruined my favorite formula ever with this. And it's my favorite color in the collection. So I'm, I'm hurt by this one and it's a gorgeous color, but it feels gritty on the lips, which is such a turnoff to me. And it would be different if they had advertised it as such, but they didn't. They advertised it as a kissing formula, and it's glittery and gritty feeling. And It feels like there's grains of sand in this lipstick, so for me, I was offended by this. You might not be, but this one burns. <laughs> okay, and then I have a couple like more glossy products. So the first one... It's not a bad product, but when a brand is so expensive, and I'm not one to turn away from a luxury product, I just don't like it when I feel like I'm being a little scammed. And that's kind of how I feel about the Gucci Beauty plumping glosses. In general, this is more so of a warning to you. I knew what I got myself into when I purchased this. Number one, personal preference. This packaging looks a little cheap to me, but anyways, I still went through with the order. What I want to warn you as a buyer, I got one of the darkest shades in this range, and girl, it is so close to clear. Now, the consistency of the formulation of this, it really isn't bad, so I don't know. It's not worth the money still, but I'm a Gucci Beauty collector, so I was going to pick this up. I went to, into store and I swatched every single shade that was available and every single one of them was a pure clear gloss. I ended up getting the darkest one because this one had the tiniest tint of color and I just think it's ridiculous of them to have so many beautiful shades but then they all pull clear. So then you were bamboozled if you picked up multiple shades. So unless you want something clear, you're paying a lot of money for this. And I'm gonna be honest, I like the formula. It's nice, but it's clear gloss. But anyways, more of a warning to you than anything. The last lip product that I have is from Summer Fridays. I've already talked about why I don't like this, but this is the Dream Lip Oil in the shade Blush Dreams. Any shade, though, is going to account for my review for this. This is just the one I picked up right now. This was a very anticipated launch because their lip butter balms were so popular, and I love the lip butter balms as well. No sense this. Anyways, 
I feel like they just took lip oil too literally because I feel like this is an oil. And some people might like that. But I've said this before, I love a thick, thick, thick lip oil. Think Clarins, think Dior. This is so watery thin, <laughs> like an oil. They took it so literally. And I feel like the color also separates from itself. It doesn't give me even coverage. It feels like water on my lips, so it disappears really quickly. The longevity is almost zero. It's just crazy to me that their lip butter balms were so good. And then this lip oil for me, it's just so bad. Now, some people like this for the thinness. I do want to make that clear. I like them thick. This is way too thin for me. The last product I have is not due to the formula. In fact, I really enjoy the formula. But this is a PITCH product, packaging wise. So this is the Rare Beauty Fine Comfort Hydrating Body Lotion. Now this isn't like my go-to scent. It's not of my preferences. I'm a vanilla girl. But whatever, like the formula of this is really good and it still does smell good. But this packaging, I about break and strain my hand when I use this. So the top here, you have to press so hard to get it to open. And then my hands will literally shake trying to squeeze product out of this bottle. It is so stiff. I barely get any product out <laughs> after squeezing it so much. It's just not functional packaging, which is interesting because I feel like they're always very mindful of their packaging and very innovative with their packaging. This is really hard for me to get product out and my hand gets tired and I barely get any product out anytime I use this. So um, just a warning, just felt the need to share that because I don't think I shared that yet. But every time I tried to use this, it was a pain, literally. Okay, Spicy Morgan over. Not many products, but those were the worst products for me that I tried in 2024 so far. And normally I have like a whole list. So I really feel like the brands are doing a great job, especially in the complexion department. I've thoroughly enjoyed what the brands have been launching. So I want you to take a moment, think about what products you have not ended up being a fan of, which ones were you personally offended by? And please don't be offended by this video. Half of the reason why I'm being so dramatic here is just to entertain you guys. Uh, it's really not that deep. All of these products I can make work. Except for, oh God. That was karma, but except for this one. Can't make that one work, uh, but it's not that deep. If you like it, I'm so happy for you. We all have products that work for us. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it somewhat entertaining and, and helpful. Make sure you guys stay tuned. I always, obviously, am uploading all the time, so there's a lot more content following this. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys later. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and have a fantastic day. Bye, guys. Have a good one.